Well, we got some good news. The Bishop Community Christmas Dinner will take place again this year, but it's going to be at a different location. The 2012 Bishop Community Christmas Dinner, as you can see by this great poster, formerly held at the Bishop Senior Center, still going to offer the free full course holiday dinner. And again, this is set for Christmas Day from 1230 until 3 p.m. And this is now going to be at the Bishop United Methodist Church at 205 North Fowler Street. They're going to have live music, prizes, caroling. Everyone is welcome. And uh, again, as you can see on the poster, the dessert potluck, you are asked to bring a favorite dessert to share. You can get more information on this. Contact Laura Smith at 760-872-4034 or Roberta Cummings at 760-873-3058. I think that's great. The Bishop Community Christmas Dinner being held once again this year. Well, we're getting information from Mammoth Lakes Police Chief Dan Watson about an incident that happened this morning in Mammoth Lakes. And according to a press release, during the early morning hours of Wednesday, December 19th, Mammoth Lakes police officers responded to a call of an intoxicated man who had just left a local hotel. Now, while searching for the person in sub-zero temperatures, the two officers were called away to handle a domestic violence in progress call. Now, after handling that domestic violence situation, the officers returned to the area of South Frontage Road to continue their search. Now, while they were doing so, they noticed that windows were broken at Jalapeno's restaurant on South Frontage Road and that there was smoke and heat inside the building. The Mammoth Lakes Fire Department responded and put out a small fire that appeared to have been lit for warmth. The suspect was gone, but it was determined that cash was missing from the register. Now, the press release goes on to state that Mammoth Lakes Police Department officers were able to continue their search and more footprints were found, which led to a residence on Callahan Way. The occupants were contacted and the officer's investigation resulted in the arrest of Evan Jack Lewis, age 18, of Mammoth Lakes on charges of burglary and arson. Evidence connecting Lewis to the crime at Jalapenos was recovered, and he was booked at the Mono County Jail in Bridgeport. Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. Mammoth Police Chief Dan Watson has confirmed that three of his men have tested four positions with the Mono County Sheriff's Office. Chief Watson said Mono County is, quote, conducting background checks on three officers, end quote. Now, if these three officers leave, Mammoth Police Department could lose a total of eight officers by July of 2013, leaving only nine on board. Now, faced with the payoff of the $30 million debt in September, the town of Mammoth Lakes called for a cut of seven police positions, the Mammoth Lakes Town Council did. Now, although at their last meeting, at least three councilmen denied their previous statements and claimed that what they really meant was that they wanted a $1.1 million cut in the police department, and it's up to Chief Watson to figure it out. This was viewed as an attempt to switch public pressure from the Mammoth Lakes Town Council to the Mammoth Lakes Police Chief. Now, the early proclamation that the police department would lose seven positions sent morale tumbling and officers looking for jobs somewhere else. Now, that early message has driven away four officers so far with the possibility of three more. The town of Mammoth Lakes cuts to the police department will not take effect until July 1st of 2013. And so, as strange as it seems, Chief Watson will actually start to recruit for officers. The chief said, quote, technically, I can hire up to the current strength, end quote. Now, Watson said he will tell recruits that their job may not be here after July 1st, but he pointed out that officer numbers will drop to nine and under town cuts, the department can maintain 10 officers. Now, Chief Watson said all of this could change if the Police Officers Association makes concessions to save positions. Watson says he has to plan for the worst case scenario of 10 officers by July 1st. Now, since personnel costs in the police department amount to more than 75% of the budget, the cuts will come out of personnel in some way. Well, Bennett Kessler filed this following report. 
After some weeks of controversy and board meetings, the executive director of AMACA, Inyomono Advocates for Community Action, Lynn Bethel, is gone. Now, as if Ms. Bethel were fired, AMACA board president Bill West said, quote, the, cho the board decided to make a change. Lynn Bethel is no longer an AMACA employee, end quote. West said the board almost unanimously voted for, quote, this change, end quote, and that was in a special meeting last Wednesday evening. Now, West said that he met with Bethel Thursday morning, and he said it was very amicable. We parted company. West said the AMACA board chose human resources manager Jill Payton to serve as interim, interim executive director while they renewed their search. When Bethel, who is from Massachusetts, took the uh, executive director job in September, agency officials were upbeat about the change. But former director Daniel Steinhagen's firing of a popular employee right before Bethel took over clouded her en entrance. Steinhagen terminated community services director Jane McDonald, who had started and built a strong garden program in Amaka, teaching the low income how to grow their own food. And more than a dozen community gardens grew out of McDonald's efforts, as did a host of admirers for the young woman's work. Now, as for a new director, West said the board will look. He said they had earlier had false starts with more than one person selected as director. West said, quote, there has to be a certain mindset to live here, and it's less money than in a big city, end quote. Amaka officials will also try to repair broken relationships regarding garden projects. Board President West said he would, quote, like to go back to our original intent, provide food for those in need, end quote. Now, in spite of personnel problems, West said Amaka moves ahead to fill food needs, and he did encourage donations to the Amaka Food Bank, which is currently low on goods. Well, times are still tough for a lot of people, and the second annual Shop with a Cop program in Inyo and Mono County, well, brought back some joy. Bennett Kessler filed this story, noting that police chiefs, sheriffs, and officers, and non-sworn personnel from all four law enforcement agencies headed to Bishop, where they were able to sponsor 26 children that may not have had a Christmas without them. Officers said those involved were, quote, very needy families. Now, some children who were joined, who joined the cops, were buying pellets for their stove to help keep their families warm. Boy, what a great thing that was. The cops and the kids uh, then went to Whiskey Creek in Bishop for breakfast, and then they headed to Kmart. Lights and sirens thrilled the kids and announced their arrival to go shopping. Sierra Wave Media's Ron Alexander was there to capture the sights. Now, the heartwarming shopping trip saw kids and officers and others with big smiles and full shopping carts. Once the children picked out gifts for their families, they brought them up to the front for gift wrap. Now, three top cops attended the event. Bishop Police Chief Chris Carter, Inyo County Sheriff Bill Lutz, and Mammoth Police Chief Dan Watson. And you can check out some more photos on Eastern Sierra Shop with a Cop on Facebook. And you can see the address on our website, sierrawave.net.